Hello there, welcome back to People State. Last time, well, uh, I ended up in a kind of awkward situation here, mostly thanks to the fact that, again, here, Rhodes, the uh, the Knights, they are probably going to be uh, lost, unfortunately. I'll probably have to try and fight Castile for uh, the island of Malta, or worst case scenario, I might actually have to try and wait until Sicily loses their core, and potentially Aragorn loses their core, and then try and have the uh, promised revolt. Um, I have no idea how else I can bring back the knights, but again, as I said, worst case scenario, I'll take, uh, I'll continue this game, take it as a spiritual victory, and I'll probably do it uh, properly offline. Uh, one of the biggest reasons why this probably will end up in a failure is due to the fact that I fail to realize that you can actually peacefully vassalize nations, even without a royal, uh, royal marriage, which I was uh, promptly pointed out. Again, the numbers on production is just a bug, thanks to the fact that I just loaded the save, so no worries there. I'm not, uh, I haven't done anything, well, weird. But, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's that basically. We're currently in a war against Poland and Lithuania. A war that, uh, well, Austria started a Holy Roman intervention because I believe Poland attacked Brandenburg, if I'm not completely mistaken here. Uh, they're actually a defender, so... Yeah, okay, so it's basically here. Austria uh, the Klingon War to get Silesia and most likely the Bohemian provinces back, which actually suits us just fine. Unfortunately, again, here the plan was to peacefully vassalize uh, the Teutons and also the Livonian Order, and that has so far not gone very well. What we'll probably have to do is fabricate a claim, declare war, and, um, and then make our move from there. But I think uh, in those terms, we're going to wait out until we. Well, I'm in a position where I can actually do that in a safe and controlled manner without pissing off Muscovy. Because right now, let's face it, they're they're very big, they're very scary, and I haven't even unified Italy yet. So uh, I might have to. Well, I might want to be a little bit more careful there. What I could do here for fun is, well, for fun's sake, is trying to uh, get myself in a position where I could potentially try and vassalize Croatia peacefully and then annex them, and basically keep on going like that. And keep myself allied with uh, the Tunic Order and also the Bonin Order. And right now, that seems actually to be the best best course of action, at least in this game. Just uh, continue to conquer, go after the Mamluk uh, They have become very, very strong, very, very dangerous. So we will fight the Ottomans, I think, now pretty much uh, right away. I think uh, I really want to take religious ideas out, just so I can actually. Uh, well, solve some issues in terms of uh, in terms of uh, of vassalizations and such. S sorry, no. So, if I am to expand this area, I definitely need religious just to speed up the process of converting the provinces, etc. There's probably another way, but I view basically taking the uh, uh, those ideas as a better as a better choice. Of course, the tolerance of heathens here will help me a lot, especially if I do a lot of conquests to bring this down to zero. So there will be some rebuild risk in the area, but it will not be high, and I can just uh, I can just work with that. Now the big question is, do I want to try and convert Sad and Ingemaland? Uh, risk of rebels is going to be quite high, or at least be considerably higher than this now. We also have uh, issues here with the Montenegrin nationalists. So I think for the time being we'll not be doing too much. Again here, I do kind of want to fight the Ottomans. They are, they are well. They currently have truces, which means that they are to some degree weakened. But again here, I'm also I'm also a little bit worried that if I piss off the Ottomans too much, that I might mess up uh, mess up some other things here. So I think we're actually going to start fabricating claims on uh, these four provinces or these five provinces here, and then we're going to work from there. So uh, the coastal provinces will of course be uh, well focused on here and I'll publicate some claims both to lessen the cost for annexing said provinces and also to uh, to make the coring a little bit faster. So uh, with that said there's not really much to uh, much going on again uh, probably very long introduction to this video far longer than I needed but I do apologize for that. Um, other than that I would uh, I would like to say that the multiplayer game is planned for either next weekend or the weekend after that. For those of you that haven't actually paid attention to the Cez Caesar of Austria, now that's an interesting ruler. 630. Well, military, <laughs> militarily the uh, Empire is going to shit apparently, but that doesn't matter. Anyways, as I was saying, the, uh, the update that I have been uh, 
have a release on my channel. The basic gist of it is that I'm thanking all of you for a thousand plus subs and for your views, your comments, your advice, everything really. And uh, I hope that we can continue, uh, well, the same procedure, if you will, the same practice in, uh, in 2015. And as a reward or a way to... I don't actually like calling it a reward because it's not really what it is, to be perfectly honest. I I like to set up multiple game with you guys because now it's basically time for it, which I tried last year didn't go very well. But the plan is, of course, to multiply game. So if you did not watch the uh, watch the update, you can uh, of course just tell me in the comments on this video or any video forwards. I'll uh, probably message those of you who are interested sometime in the middle of this week uh, or close to the weekend, and we'll figure something out here in terms of when everyone can can play, etc. And also the plan is to stream said game, so it should be, it should be interesting, of course. So we'll just have to have to see how plane, well, planes pans out from there. I'm also kind of interested here in if I could actually go for a brutal vassalization of uh, of Serbia, and I think we're actually going to do that now first. We're actually going to vassalize uh, Serbia, and the reason is very very simple: by vassalizing Serbia, I can then get some cores here in the area. As you can see, there's not many calls, it's just four that I do not have uh, at the moment, but they do have a lot of claims that I can use, especially against uh, uh, Bo Bulgaria and Hungary, as well as Croatia. So that is, of course, a, a positive uh, thing to take with us, and that is something that I will be using. So, hmm. <clears throat> Lombardia has converted, and. Seriously, this is the worst place to have converted because of the fact that religious tax income is already at 8%. I definitely am going to need a religious idea set just to have any chance in uh, a snowball's chance in hell to actually convert that back. But again, as I was saying, the plan is to get the multiplayer up and running. It's going to be streamed. It's probably going to be published on the... Uh oh, so Byzantium. I'm sorry, it's just so many interesting events here that are happening at once here. Byzantium, the Council of Heracleion, this is basically a counter-reformation. And I find that hilarious that Byzantium, someone actually told me in the comments that I hadn't created the true Byzantium, both uh, when I... both when I did my... Uh, my own game, if you will. And secondly, when I... Uh, how should I put this? Um... And secondly, when I, uh, both in my Byzantium game, that's far earlier, uh, I have no idea when I actually played that, uh, but I played a Byzantium game where I basically went to the Roman Empire and became uh, a Catholic, etc. And someone did not like that because it wasn't the true true empire anymore, if you can, if you can say that again. So basically, I kind of have to agree with them, but uh, I find it ironic or hilarious that in this series too, the... Uh, well, the idea ended up with uh, Byzantium joined, Pact of Uniformity, or ACT. Uh, but yeah, I find that funny. But yeah, multiplayer game will be coming, and again, if you're interested in that, just uh, pop a uh, pop a comment. Uh, anyways, I'll stop jittering on about that in a... basically... I don't like talking about that in this game because I kind of like being focused, but... I got it off-railed here, and I've just wasted 8 minutes of your life, sorry. But we are going to fight a war here against Serbia, we're going to continue the fabrication of claims on the Ottoman provinces. And other than that, I don't think there's really much else we'll do. Uh, I should probably not be taking too many provinces out call myself, because I do have other uses for the admin points, but I think that's uh, that's right. We're going to take the Benamarolans, a humanist idea, gives better relations over time, plus 33%, which in turn means that I can conquer more because people will forgive me faster. All in all, I really... A really good idea. Now I'm a little bit unsure if my Santium here will accept these promises, but I guess that is a big no-no. Now, funnily enough, here if it wasn't for the coalition, I would probably declare war on. Oh. Could. Oh no, I only expanded the nationalism even further. Or did I actually get a lucky break in? No. I don't think I did. So how long does nationalism last for now? Yeah, 1537. So I just expanded it. Uh, I was kind of hoping there would be a bug that I cancelled it and then I could potentially use that to my advantage, but there was no such thing, and uh, I got I got harm for it. But we are going to go for a full annexation here of Serbia. And the reason for that is, of course, really, really simple. By going for a full annexation of Serbia, we can then... 
yeah, I'm off war with, with Poland, that's how it is. Uh, the plan here is, of course, to release Serbia. So I'll be waiting with a war against the Ottomans until we basically have uh, released Serbia. Uh, the war against Poland here is going rather nicely. It should end very, very soon with potentially here the Union being broken. We have a new Pope, 255. I've had a lot of good Popes lately. Unfortunately, we did not get the, uh, the Curia Bank, so no, nothing for us to do there. But for the time being, there's not really, again, much to to do per se. We do have uh, core claims thanks to the release of, or the planned release of Serbia. So I don't have any worries on the area in terms of uh, conquering. So for the time being, we'll just sit back here and, uh, and wait and see what happens. Now, do I want to allow Ingemanland to get heresy? Or do I want to reverse course? It will be a decade without, with heightened technology costs. Which, to be fair, is not the best thing ever, but military-wise, I should probably take a military idea, just due to the fact that I get so extremely much of it. Um, we already actually have increased narrow-minded from another event. So I guess we'll just expand it a little bit longer. But yeah, this is not cord. Hmm. I'll have to figure something out here, but for now we, uh, we're happy with the current situation. Well, then it's just anti-military coalition against me, so I should probably have paid attention and actually could have warned them before that time. But the coalition aren't, isn't actually too big, it's just that Venice, we have Mantua, and we have uh, Genoa. So I'm actually kind of interested in actually declaring war on potentially the minor here, uh, in this case Mantua. Uh, not Venice, of course, France, Muscovy, not really someone I want to tangle with. We have Mantua, Switzerland, Lithuania and Hungary, not really someone I want to tangle with either. Uh, but yeah, I'm basically kind of interested in claiming war on the coalition on the basis of... Well, this looks actually kind of interesting. If things go very badly here, I could end up in a situation where Bulgaria could actually be... Well, annexed and then released. Which would be hilarious under the circumstances. Um, we'll have to see how this pans out. If things go very well here, Bulgaria will most likely cease to exist. And then I can, again, catch and release. Um, on other bad news, we have Brescia has turned reformed, but in positive news, we can actually tack up our diplomatic tech to level 10, the flute, which gives uh, an increase in trade efficiency by 10%. Sadly, growth increased by 10, enables me to build flutes and war galleys, and my trade range has been increased by 20. <clears throat> Both those are, of course, uh, very good. Now, Poland is very close to, well, losing here. Austria has actually started going into Lithuania, which is interesting, but uh, I would expect them to fall very, very soon. Savoy also entered a military coalition against us, which is not the best thing ever, but if the coalition attacks, I can always use my, well, power in this case to, uh, to take advantage of that and break it, not only break it up, but of course the alliance that I have with France and and Austria are of course very, very powerful and prominent in this, uh, in this scenario. So for the time being, we'll just wait here. <clears throat> Bulgaria is also someone that I'm really interested in actually trying to either annex and release or something along those lines, it would be useful. Uh, Serbia is still a core of Serbia, luckily enough. I was kind of concerned there for a second. Um, but yeah, we... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, uh, we are looking good. Uh, again, yeah, I kind of want to annex and release so I can actually use them for... Do you know what? We're actually going to do that. No, we're going to actually see how this pans out, because they're war with Hungary and Bosnia. Sorry, my voice is just broken today. I'll be right back. And there we go. There has been peace here. <clears throat> so, as you can see here, the peace is really simple. Poland will be forced to give 10% war operations. Uh, Masovia has been released. The Teutonic Order gained a lot of this territory back. And... Uh, well, Poland will release Silesia and Masovia as a sovereign state, and of course, uh, Moravia went to uh, Austria. So it's actually a really crippling piece here for Poland. They are left with uh, merely eight provinces, and could actually potentially collapse it, which would be hilarious, let's just be honest. But uh, that's not the interesting part. This is the interesting part. Now I can actually release uh, Serbia, and they'll get set and Travunia. So of course I sacrifice a core here, but... Basically, the provinces that I will be getting from Serbia here, hopefully, they are Bishopric, Catholic Bishopric, uh, will probably benefit me far more than the, well, slight losses. So, Croatia doesn't actually have any allies at all, and as such, they uh, 
they more or less end up being a very useful idiot here, if you will, because it means they aren't a very well, they are an easy target. I'll get these two for virtually free, so that's good. Kosovo will also be easy to take back, Hum will also be easy to take back, especially if Bosnia goes for the annexation, then I'm pretty sure I can actually just hand these over to uh, to Serbia, no fuss. If not, I'll just call them myself, so... Yeah, things are looking good. For, except, uh, except, of course, for the fact that these guys are vassals of, uh, of Hungary. So that's not the best thing ever. But we will go ahead and declare war on uh, Croatia, and I'm also kind of tempted to go after to go after the Ottomans. But I'm also, of course, in that regard, tempted to just uh, to just wait here, uh, especially in the war or potential war in this case against the Ottomans, simply due to the fact that uh, by waiting, I could, for instance, uh, how should I put this? Uh, by waiting, I can. Uh, I can potentially secure myself Bulgaria as well. And also here I've actually gone ahead and changed my uh, focus to admin power, which actually gives me now a flat aid in all. Uh, it was diplomatic power before, but it changed to admin power, should have done that ages ago. But basically I think I can afford to have a diplomatic relation too many. Uh, it won't be for too long either, especially if you consider all the, all the facts. Uh, it'll just be until basically Bulgaria is either annexed or well, something along those lines. And basically the plan by doing so is to uh, is to get the entire area here, which will be of course a huge help once I have to fight the Mamluks, etc. So, yeah. How the hell does Siena get affected by a center up in Würzburg? Isn't that around here? No, that's Ergsburg. I believe Würzburg is up here. That makes sense, it really does. And of, of course, the Reformation only targets uh, provinces that are overrating base tax, because everybody knows that's how it works. Uh, sorry, I'm just a little bit annoyed in how the event currently is uh, is working. It's uh, it's probably how it's intended, all things considered, but it's, I'm still a bit annoyed by it. So I'll just finish the war here with Croatia. Uh, we. Sorry, we're actually going to end this episode here. Sorry for the rambling early on in the episode, but uh, I feel that we have made a little bit of progress again. If you're interested in joining a multiplayer game uh, with me and uh, other fans, or other subscribers, other viewers, uh, call yourself whatever you want, really. Um, sorry, that, that sounds rude and inconsiderate. I, uh, <laughs> I enjoy having all of you watching, uh, so if you want to join, feel free to, uh, to post a comment. Anyways, I'm going to end this here, and we're going to continue next time. Feel free to comment in the comments, praise, criticism, anything you feel like, and I'll see you outside next time. Bye.